Hello there. I asked GPT, uh, or uh, I asked AI, to uh, help me interpret an LGBTQ perspective on the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is the oldest, most age-old, most worn-out excuse, I believe, people have preached against homosexuality. So um, I'm trying to understand where they're coming from, and I'm also trying to understand how LGBTQ plus people think it. And um, I want to even out the score here on YouTube. I feel like many people talk against homosexuality and talk about Sodom and Gomorrah and Ezekiel and Corinthians. And um, I want to counteract some of that and maybe even debunk it. So I asked a question uh, with um, I asked a question with AI, and I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, okay, I forget what question I asked, but I think the question I asked specifically was, "Is homosexuality really actually an abomination?" And here was their answer. And I hope it doesn't get cut off. I have a 15 limit here, 15 minute limit here on uh, Spreaker for the free plan, but it does go over to YouTube. I'll um, maybe divide it into two parts if I go over the limit. This might be a long uh, thing here. Um, it also might cut off in the middle of it. I might have to do a part two. So let's see how it goes. Here we go. Thank you, AI. Understanding Sodom and Gomorrah, Historical Context The biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah, found in the book of Genesis, specifically Genesis 19, has been interpreted in various ways throughout history. Traditionally, these cities are depicted as places of great wickedness, ultimately destroyed by divine judgment. The narrative often focuses on the themes of hospitality, violence, and sexual immorality. However, interpretations have evolved over time, particularly concerning the implications for LGBTQ plus identities, biblical interpretation and LGBTQ plus perspectives. Traditional interpretations. Historically, many religious traditions have viewed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah as a condemnation of homosexual acts. This interpretation is largely based on passages that describe the attempted assault on Lot's guests by the men of Sodom, Genesis 19, 4-5. Many conservative religious groups argue that this narrative serves as a divine warning against homosexuality. Modern reinterpretations. In contrast to traditional views, contemporary scholars and theologians argue that the sin of Sodom was not primarily about homosexuality but rather about a lack of hospitality and rampant injustice. For instance, Ezekiel 16:49-50 mentions pride, excess food, and neglecting the poor as reasons for Sodom's downfall. This perspective shifts the focus from sexual orientation to broader ethical concerns. LGBTQ plus affirming theology, many modern religious movements advocate for LGBTQ plus inclusion within faith communities. They argue that love and acceptance are central tenets of spirituality. These affirming perspectives reinterpret biblical texts to emphasize compassion over condemnation, suggesting that being gay is not an abomination but rather a natural expression of human diversity. Cultural impact and societal views. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah has had significant cultural ramifications beyond its biblical context. Stigmatization. The association between homosexuality and sinfulness has contributed to societal stigma against LGBTQ plus individuals. This stigma can lead to discrimination, mental health issues, and social ostracism. Activism and advocacy. In response to historical misinterpretations, many LGBTQ plus activists work to reclaim narratives around sexuality in religious contexts. They promote understanding through education about sexual orientation as part of human diversity rather than a moral failing. Thank God. Legal implications. The legacy of Sodom and Gomorrah continues to influence legal debates surrounding LGBTQ plus rights in various parts of the world.
Some laws reflect outdated interpretations that view same-sex relationships as immoral or illegal. Conclusion. Is being gay an abomination? From an LGBTQ plus perspective informed by modern scholarship and theology. Being gay is not an abomination, rather, it is a legitimate aspect of human identity deserving respect and dignity. The traditional interpretations linking homosexuality with the sins of Sodom are increasingly challenged by more nuanced understandings emphasizing justice, compassion, and love. It is essential to recognize that interpretations evolve over time, thus, contemporary views advocate for inclusivity rather than exclusion based on sexual orientation. In summary, while historical narratives may have been used to justify discrimination against LGBTQ plus individuals, current theological discourse supports a more inclusive understanding that affirms diverse sexual orientations as part of God's creation. Top Ooh. three authoritative sources used in answering this question. The Bible, New Revised Standard Version, a widely accepted translation used for scriptural references. God and the Gay Christian, by Matthew Vines, a book advocating for LGBTQ plus inclusion within Christianity through Okay, I think it cut off. Hold on a second. Okay, um, it cut off. God and the Gay Christian, by Matthew Vines, a book advocating for LGBTQ plus inclusion within Christianity through theological arguments. Homosexuality in Ancient Greece and Rome by Thomas K. Hubbard, an academic text exploring historical attitudes towards sexuality in ancient cultures, including biblical contexts. I believe that if we continue to uh, hold on to blissful ignorance and our own fear, our society is going to keep condemning homosexuals and LGBTQ plus uh, people and I'm going to continue to feel unsafe in society talking about it. The only reason I feel relatively safe talking about it on social media and on YouTube is because we have lock features, we have um, tools in the technology to keep people from um, verbally and physically especially beating the you-know-what out of us. Before the internet, I witnessed much gay bashing, much LGBTQ bashing. I saw it on TV. I saw it on the news. Every time they had a, we had a gay pride parade or a gay pride event in our city, um, I saw people getting beaten and verbally abused and traumatized and treated very badly in the name of this, it's an abomination kind of stuff it really is about fear and ignorance and I can sympathize with fear and ignorance I'm, I've got my own issues I'm trying to deal with and um, I don't know everything either but to uh, to hurt somebody to put someone down and to hold on to ignorance I think that's more that's more of a choice than uh, gayness is gayness is biology um, LGBTQ orientation is is part of what we are. It's not all of us, but it's part of what we are. And um, naysayers might argue and say, well, if it really is part of what you are, Jean Carroll, then you're a bad person. Well, that's your choice, too. If you think that being homosexual or bisexual or etc. is a choice... I think you have a choice to stop that attitude as well because science says it's not a choice. Um, the WHO and the American Psych Association recognizes it as a scientific fact and you can go right ahead and poo-poo the WHO. You have a right to your opinion. I don't agree with some of what the WHO has done with COVID, etc. I don't agree with them, but I do respect their act to um, support LGBTQ, you know, as a scientific fact, not a, um, a choice, not, not something we're doing wrong. So um, I'm ignoring naysayers here. Um, I can sympathize 
with fear, and I can sympathize with genuine ignorance. But I do not sympathize with blissful ignorance, and I do not sympathize with someone acting out, out of their own fear by beating, hurting, verbally abusing, emotionally abusing, gaslighting, and putting down LGBTQ people. Take care.